And so issue one ends with Wonder Woman, for some reason, showing up to confront her mother. Okay, when did she get there? Ah, screw it, who cares? Okay, we turn the page and... Oh, you've gotta be kidding me! There's two large paragraphs of text explaining what happens between this issue and the next! But how could that be? This was just one issue following into another! Well, folks, this is as good a time as any to give you a little lesson in event comics. In an event comic, several ongoing series in the main comic universe will have tie-in issues to the event, exploring in greater detail a particular plot point. Or, as we see here, having important plot points for the event itself! Now, I love big crossover event comics, but it's a little frustrating when you invest money in a miniseries hoping to get a complete story, and you get jacked by the publisher who says, Oops, sorry, if you want to know why this happened, you have to pick up the comic you don't regularly pick up! It's one of the most frustrating aspects of event comics. It gets worse when the stories are written by completely different writers who only peripherally know about what they're talking about when they're writing the plot point, so the events don't match up to what we see in the main comic! <sighs> okay, rant over. Here's what they felt wasn't important enough to include in the hardcover release of Amazon's Attack. Wonder Woman and Hippolyta have their reunion, and she quickly realizes that Hippolyta is far too nutty to be acting like herself and that she's under mind control. Instead of using that magic lasso of hers that frees people from mind control, she goes to confront Cersei, who reveals her plans to nuke Themyscira for some reason. Hippolyta, overhearing this, then stabs Cersei with a sword and she vanishes. But Hippolyta is still completely batty, so they go into battle. Meanwhile, it's revealed that Sarge Steel is being impersonated by the shapeshifter Everyman, a villain left over from the much better than this Series 52. The action spy Nemesis, who's known for his own mastery of disguises, then turns into Sarge Steel as well in the hopes of discrediting every man's... Oh, you know what, just screw it. I mean, seriously, who the hell enjoys having their comics narrated to? Wait. Okay, after that tedious exposition, we get on with issue two. After a one-page recap done with Lex News, get it, it's like Fox News, but with Lex Luthor's company owning it, ha 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 ha, and we go back to our military jets. They get the okay to open fire on the Amazons, but then, holy crap, an arrow pierces through the cockpit glass and stabs a female pilot in the neck. An arrow made of wood and stone pierces through the glass of a fighter jet's cockpit. The pilot ejects and she manages to land on the ground where she's found by the Amazons. Instead of saying something like, you fought with honor, sister, the Amazons just stab her through the heart. Oh, good, because it's been a whole issue since we got to see someone brutally murdered. But then the cavalry arrives, with Black Canary and the Justice League arriving. By the way, at this point in the game, Black Canary is supposed to be leading the Justice League, but as we'll soon discover, that aspect of continuity is also completely thrown out. Even the heroes are completely baffled by the idea of an arrow taking down a jet, and they discuss what they need to do. They agree that rescue is their first priority, even though logically it makes more sense to have a few big guns attack and the rest work on rescue, thus stemming further violence, and they go off to do their thing. We have a completely pointless page of Green Lantern rescuing a woman who proclaims, You're here, finally, thank God! Thank God the men have finally arrived! Back with the two fake Sarge Steels, Nemesis stabs every man through the hand to show how his metal hand is fake. He takes charge while every man is taken to a cell. So the fake Sarge Steel plot point ended up being... Well, okay, we do learn that because of the impersonation, that's why military operations have been slow to make any difference on the Amazons. But even if they weren't, what do you expect? The Amazons have got, like, bows and arrows on their side! Something apparently attacked military bases outside of D.C., in California no less, preventing more jets to come help. Batman, apparently taking charge... Good, because of course Black Canary is a woman, and knowing this comic, as a woman, she must be completely stupid or insane. Batman also comments that they're not sure what side Wonder Woman is on. Yes, way to trust your longtime friend and ally who'd never slaughter an entire population of civilians, Batsy Pansy. Speaking of, for a book that's purportedly about Wonder Woman's mythos, we're 44 pages into this story and she's appeared in all of one. Oh well, I suppose it could just be about the extended DC Universe as a whole and not Wonder Woman herself. EXCEPT FOR THE FACT THAT HER NAME IS RIGHT ON THE COVER AT THE TOP! Our establishing shot is to a building called the National Museum of America, which I'm sure is supposed to be the Smithsonian, except it doesn't really match up to the pictures of the Smithsonian I found on Google. Anywho, Donna Troy, who you may remember from my Titans number 1 review, shows up and promptly beats up two Amazon guards. I'll save Donna's long and complicated history for my countdown review, but to sum it up, she's Wonder Woman's actual sister. So right now, Donna Troy has had more panel time than Wonder Woman has. 
Huh. Anyway, she confronts Hippolyta. Alright, here we go. This should be good. One of my favorite characters battling a monarch gone mad. Okay, blah blah. Donna won't follow her. She came to talk peace. Yeah, I'm sure Hibonkersla is really interested in peace at this point. And Hippolyta says that if Diana was there, they could all talk it. What? 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 Donna says she'll bring him right away? Yeah, see what I mean when I say all the women in this comic are stupid or crazy? Okay, Donna walks outside and is confronted by a silhouetted figure. You know who it is? Well, we never learn in the comic itself. Because this is where Donna stuff spins off into DC's weekly series, Countdown. Meaning that this entire sequence has also been completely pointless. You know, if the comic itself doesn't give a crap about its own story, why should I? Okay, now Hippolyta meets with Philippus and Artemis, two longtime supporting characters in Wonder Woman, and technically, the rightful leaders of the Amazons after Hippolyta gave up the throne. Blah, blah, the attack on the West Coast was wrong, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here we go. Philippus mentions that they've always fought with honor, and Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs responds, Yes, yes we have. And what has that gained us? Years of living in hiding, in seclusion, in fear of the world of man. Hmm, she makes a good point. I mean, it's not like the Amazons had open contact and communication with the rest of the world for years and openly exchanged diplomatic emissaries or anything. Oh, wait, yes they did! I hate this comic! I hate it! So, yeah, these two are completely ineffectual, and the twisted clown that has replaced an Apollota orders the battle to resume. This war makes increasingly less sense with each passing moment. Understatement of the century! Apparently communications are being jammed or some stupid crap like that, and it prevents Nemesis from getting the troops to withdraw. Since it's all a complicated trap, not that it matters much, we've seen the military is useless against such advanced weaponry as long swords and pointy sticks. And oh goody, Wonder Woman finally arrives! I was wondering when you'd finally show up. I mean, it's your crossover event. You'd think you'd actually be a part of it. Is this the part where you question my loyalty to America and claim you're just being pragmatic? Yes. Batman's a dick. And Wonder Woman's loyalty is to the world. Stupid comic. Where do you stand? Where I have always stood. On the side of justice. This is good enough for Batman, and then suddenly, for some reason, we cut away for one panel and then cut back, but Wonder Woman is gone, and suddenly Superman is standing there. Are we all sure every man is still under lock and key? Yeah, out of 54 pages, Wonder Woman appears in two so far! Remind me again why I did that whole prologue explaining Wonder Woman if she's not even really in the comic? Anywho, Superman suddenly hears something and he flies off at top speed. Nemesis contacts Batman, and issue two ends with him informing him that Kansas... All of Kansas is on fire! Kansas is on fire, eh? Then they should fight fire with fire. <laughs> this comic sucks! Oh, but we're not done yet, folks! Yeah, there are still four more issues to go! <laughs> there are still four more issues to go! <laughs>